sitting here at one of our favorite breakfast places watching the weather report on Fox Weather, and they've been showing how many tornadoes have touched down. All of the flooding, Kentucky got hit, Tennessee has been hit, through the Ohio Valley has gotten a whole lot of crap too, and it's going to continue on throughout the day. It's crazy. Houston is 79 degrees, and then you look up there in Minneapolis, you're at 36 degrees. Absolutely crazy, the difference in temperature state to state. So the weather, like I said, has been crazy. Um, the first thing I did when I got back home from breakfast was to pull up. Y'all are going to know exactly what I'm going to say here. I'm watching Ryan Hall, y'all. He is actually live streaming currently on YouTube. It is 2.16 p.m. Central Standard Time. So 1, 6, no, 3.16 Eastern Time. He's been live streaming for two hours about everything that's going on with the weather because it is a big deal right now. And I'm kind of curious if the upcoming solar eclipse has anything to do with what our weather is going to be doing for the next couple days. Like does the solar eclipse itself change the way that our regular atmospheric stuff feels? I am not Ryan Hall, y'all. So I do not have any answers. He may be talking about it. I've just been keeping an eye on it um, since I got home. I haven't been listening the whole time. But I will say if you happen to be in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, um, and those are the three right now that he's got on the screen, I'd be paying attention to what's going on. We actually have weather moving, bad weather moving in for us. Nothing awful. Again, I'm in the panhandle. I'm in Okaloosa County, Florida, and it is 75 degrees here today. It is gloomy out, and it's only like a 34% chance of rain, but overnight it's supposed to pick up and get pretty severe, and then tomorrow it's supposed to be whatever. I take that with a grain of salt. Our weathermen seem to have a 50-50 chance of getting things right. When I really want to know what's happening, I go look at Ryan Hall, y'all, just to make sure that um, I am in a safe space, that where I live is not going to be hit by anything, because he seems to be very smart when it comes to analyzing the weather and what is going on. So for those of you who are in the, I think it's the southeast, north um, east section of the United States, just pay attention to the weather and make sure that you guys stay safe. Again, Ryan Hall, y'all on YouTube, he has been live streaming for two hours. Uh, I don't know how long he'll stay, but it is worth checking out. So Outside of the weather, I would like to talk to you guys about just a couple of things. Honestly, I don't have any one specific thing to talk about because there's so many things I want to talk about. And I think we're just going to like bullet point hit some stuff. So Squirrel Tribe, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you immensely for joining me for whatever it is that we're talking about today. Right now, the first thing I want to talk about is what the um, Federal Railroad Association has done, the FRA. Now, when Norfolk Southern had its significant, massive train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, in February of last year, February 3rd, 2023, to be specific, uh, we talked then and for months afterwards about how, especially with the railroad strike that went on before, uh, after that, before that, my timeline is off and I know it, uh, the railroad strike that went on where Biden made it illegal, basically, for railroad employees to go on strike, uh, we talked about the fact that a lot of these railroads are not having full crews. They're trying to get by with just one person or two people on these, on these trains. And then they're surprised when something goes awry or amok or whatever word you want to use. And the sun just came out weirdly. It just got really bright. Sorry about that. Um, so now in July of 2022, I believe it was sent to Congress, if you will, asking that they, they mandate how many crew members are on a train at any specific time, because a lot of these, um, train companies, Norfolk Southern, BNSF and, um, oh, Union Pacific. And now you have Canadian rail who bought out Kansas, Kansas City. Oh, y'all, my brain isn't braining fully and I didn't pull it up ahead of time, but we know there's a lot of different train companies, right? Um, anyway, they tried to say that uh, they all need to have a certain amount of crews on there. Well, it just went through, uh, if I can find my little article here, because I have so many things pulled up. The feds mandate a two-person minimum for most train crews. So Biden administration, they're going to give all the, the credit to Biden, obviously. Biden administration sets bar high for class one railroads looking to streamline operations. That is the whole kit and caboodle of this. It says large freight railroads will have to undergo a rigorous approval process if they want to streamline operations down to one person train crews. The new requirement is part of Federal Railroad Administration's final rule announced on Tuesday, that is uh, today, my dudes, mandating a two-person crew minimum on trains operated by Class 1 railroads unless a railroad can obtain approval for a one-person crew from the FRA, Federal Railroad Administration. Not, I don't know what I called it the first time. Um, 
But so two person crew is the new mandate. It is mandated. You must have at least two people on a train on a class one railroad, uh, unless you can somehow, some way prove to the FRA that you can run this train with only one person, but they're going to have to jump through hoops to do that as they should. I still think you need more than two people. You need three or more, but again, I don't work on the rail line, so I don't know exactly what all each person does. I do know that it seems that more people would in theory, give you a better chance of having less, um, derailments, less issues, less, uh, overheating of things because somebody be able to keep an eye on what's going on. Just a lot of different things, right? But the, the FRA has mandated two people per train. And if you want to get down to a one person one, um, you have to jump through a lot of hoops. Now it says common sense tells us that large freight trains, some of which can be over three miles long, which I have seen, and I'm sure you guys have seen, should have at least two crew members, crew members on board. And now there's a federal regulation in place to ensure trains are safely staffed. This is of course, According to good old Pete B, the U.S. Transportation Secretary, um, announced in the final ruling, which came through today, this rule requiring safe train crew sizes is long overdue. We are proud to deliver this change. It will make workers, passengers, and communities safer. Now, it does say here that... Um, the rule differs slightly from the initial proposed rulemaking, which was issued in 2022 and how it treats class two and three freight railroads. According to the FRA, it allows in limited cases, such smaller railroads to start or continue certain one person train crew operations by notifying the agency and complying with new safety standards. So in theory, if you guys are seeing most of these larger freight trains going through, there'll be two people on there. Unless they have jumped through all the hoops, they can have one person. If they happen to be a class two, class three, and they're smaller trains, they may already have a one person crew, but you're going to see, generally speaking, two people on trains, which I think is a much better idea than not, because they were trying to get down to one person and use AI or different electronics to run the rest of everything. But we all know that uh, human human eyes can see things that AI cannot see. They can't really see the car that looks like it's going to come up onto the tracks and not make it over or stop on the tracks. They can't see the person that's about to dart across the tracks. Not the same way a person like you and I can eyes on the road, things like that. So having two people on the train, I think is an extremely, extremely good idea. Now, another thing I wanted to mention to you guys is what Walmart has done. So Walmart is trying to do something good, I guess you could say, and they are, we know that they've put in more health centers in a lot of different Walmarts. They're trying to up their healthcare capacity at Walmarts. Well, now they are trying to put in more ability for women to get mammograms inside Walmarts because breast cancer is such a huge thing. So many women deal with breast cancer in their lives. Um, and since, you know, statistics say now one in every two people is going to have some sort of cancer in their life, it is good to have some sort of screening for things, right? So they are trying to implement more cancer screening, uh, breast cancer screening for women in their, uh, uh, Walmart healthcare locations. According to this, um, if I can find the correct thing here, I've got a lot of things pulled up right now. So Radnet, which is who they're going to be, um, partnering with Radnet and Walmart have partnered to make breast health screenings more accessible, encouraging proactive community-based healthcare. As part of the pilot, Radnet will actively promote breast health education and awareness initiatives. It's a partnership that global data managing director, Neil Saunders sees as a positive for Walmart and its customers. So according to this, you're going to see, uh, I think they said uh, they're trying to get at least 150 stores to have, uh, as their pilot to have the healthcare sections that have the mammogram screenings in it. So for those people who it's harder for them to get to a larger doctor's office or a hospital because of where they live, but Walmarts are generally within 10 miles or 10 minutes. I don't remember which one it is. Hopefully if you're in one of those locations where Walmart is the closest thing you can get to and they have a health center, maybe you could go there for your breast cancer screenings. I think that's a good thing to have. Um, I don't, think that it's bad what Walmart is doing there, just so we're all fully aware. Now, I don't know who else. We talked about AT&T yesterday and their massive data breach, which they said 73 million customers have been affected by it. And it's for all the information from 2019 and before the data breach is now, but it only breached, uh, information from 2019 and before that, not 29, not 2020 and after, right? Well, I got an email or a text message yesterday from AT&T that I wanted to show you guys. So I get this text message and it says, let's see if I can pull this thing up. So it says this right here. I don't 
this is hard to see, but this is from AT&T and it says, hi, it's AT&T due to recent change uh, to your account. You're no longer eligible to receive the auto pay and paperless bill discount. Your next bill will reflect this change to enter or to re-enroll or manage your account. Go to att.com slash auto pay bill. And I was like, what the crap? First off, I wanted to um, say that uh, I, we talked about this with Wells Fargo, how they're making all these changes, right? And I couldn't understand why they would just say we're not eligible for auto pay and paperless bill discount anymore. We've had auto pay and paperless bill forever. We use a credit card for auto pay. I use a credit card to auto pay everything. I do not want to put my personal bank account information, whether it's Wells Fargo, it's Bank of America, it's SunTrust, it's Citibank, whatever you have. I don't want to put my personal banking information into any of these things if I don't have to, because that is my money. If something goes wrong, that's my money that is held up. If something goes wrong with a credit card, that's the creditor's money that's held up and they can deal with it and they can go back and forth with the company that's held up the money or that has hacked into something, whatever else. But my personal money that I have worked for will stay safe and secure where it is, right? So I pay all big bills with a credit card uh, and then I turn around and I pay those off and then I don't get interest or anything like that, but I build reward points and everything else on my credit cards and I keep my, my personal money safe and, and whatever else. Now we know for a fact that a lot of places have started charging customers more to cover their business expenses of using credit cards. Most credit card companies are charging anywhere from 1.5 to 3.5% of a total in order to use a credit card. Restaurants have been significantly um, more apt to do this lately when if you go to pay the credit card your bill comes out and it's like it's a hundred dollars if you pay cash it's 103.25 or 103.50 if you pay with a credit card because those credit card bills or those credit card fees that businesses have been paying for the longest are now being passed on to you the customer even though we know that trying to pay with cash a lot of places don't take cash it's kind of like being stuck between a rock and a hard place right well AT&T is is kind of doing the same thing according to AT&T this is from their uh website this is actually off of AT&T okay this little thing that I have here it says AT&T is joining a growing number of companies that are making changes to their auto pay discounts. Now, if you want the full discount, you will need to pay by debit card or bank account. If you pay by credit card, your discount will soon be cut in half. In the past, no matter how you paid for your AT&T service, you would get a $10 credit as long as you also had paperless billing. Now to keep that $10 discount, you need to switch your payment to a debit card or bank account. If you don't, AT&T will soon only give you a $5 discount. All right. Great that you're getting a discount no matter what. Like that's great. Thanks AT&T, right? For going paperless and stuff like that. But remember when I talked about Wells Fargo and I talked about the fact that the Biden administration has now put through the cap on over limit fees, late fees, all that stuff at $8. There's no more $29 or $39 or whatever they charge when it comes to Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express. There's none of that, right? Well, Again, these credit card companies are charging, I think, um, comp other companies more now to kind of combat that. So AT&T, let's see if I can figure out how to phrase this all correctly because it's all swimming around in my head. Uh, AT&T, you used to be able to pay with your credit card and there was no extra fee for you to pay with your credit card. But AT&T would then have to pay, of course, Amex or Visa or MasterCard, whatever fee it was for all those credit card payments. Well, now those credit card payment fees have probably gone up at these bank companies or these uh, credit card companies because they're not making the same billion dollars or $10 billion off of us in late fees, over limit fees, whatever fees, right? So now AT&T is like, hey, listen, we can't continue to pay these usage fees, if you will, for using credit cards. So now you, the consumer, have to change the way you do things because we're no longer doing it this way. So you have to give us your bank account information instead, which again, I personally am not a fan of inputting my banking account, my personal money information into these things, because if something gets hacked, as we know, AT&T can get hacked, data breached, whatever else, you can breach data and get my Amex card number. I'll turn around and cancel my Amex. That's fine. But if you breach the data or whatever data breach and you get my personal checking account 
Do you know how long my money will just be gone until the bank, Bank of America or Wells Fargo or Citibank or whoever you happen to have can replenish that money? Or even if they will, you are pretty much a sitting duck at that point. There's nothing you can really do. Your money is out there. Your money is gone versus with a credit card. So for AT&T to turn around and say, hey, we're not taking credit cards anymore for these auto pays. You have to use a bank account. I don't like it personally because it, it really hurts you and I, the consumer, but it helps them save money in the long run, which I guess in theory you could say will save us money in the long run because maybe they won't turn those fees around to the consumer. I do like the fact that they will still give you a $5 discount as opposed to a $10. I wish it was still $10, but I can understand them not doing that because they want people to join the bank account uh, information instead. But there's going to be more and more companies that are doing this that are going to make it so that if you try to pay with a credit card, you're going to get hurt, but they want you to pay with your bank account. And I think a lot of people don't understand because I've had people comment before, oh, I use my, my bank card like a credit card. No, boo boo. That's not how it works. Just because it has a Visa logo or a MasterCard logo, it is still your money. Just because you're sliding it as credit and signing instead of putting in a pin doesn't change anything. It still comes from your personal checking account. One is immediate. One takes a day or two, but they are all from your personal money. The only way to get an actual credit card that's not tied to your bank account is to get an actual credit card that's not tied to your bank account. Any of these other ones that are tied to your personal money, to me, are the scariest forms of payment ever. I don't take my bank card with me anywhere. It never leaves the house. It is in my safe. I never, ever use it for any reason whatsoever because that's my money. If I were to lose my wallet, that's my money that they have access to. If I lose a credit card, Hey, Amex, yeah, I lost my shit. Turn it off, please. And we're done, okay? With nothing to worry about. Hey, Bank of America, somebody stole my debit card, my, my debit visa card, whatever. Bank of America goes, okay, well, we'll cancel it, um, but whatever charges have gone through, we can't put that money back into your account until we do an internal investigation, until we reach out to those companies, until this, this, and this, and that's all your money. Now, if that's already gone, how do you pay your mortgage? How do you pay your car payment, your insurance, your everything else? So again, I use credit cards for everything for a safety reason for myself when it comes to saving my personal money from getting hacked into. So that's, I wanted to bring you guys that information just so you had that. And then there was another thing here that I had that I wanted to mention to you and I can't remember what it was. Maybe it wasn't a big deal. It's probably not a big deal because I don't remember. Ooh, y'all look at this. I'm still going back and forth between this and Ryan Hall, y'all. Those purple and reds are definitely scary places to be. This is in, what state is this? Evansville, Mechanicsville. Well, Mechanicsville is in Alabama, right? Isn't Mechanicsville in Alabama? Rolling Acres, Chandler, Winter Storm Watch, um, New Hampshire. Oh, this is New Hampshire he's talking about. All right, y'all be careful everywhere. Or is this Indiana? Y'all, there's so much going on. Just pay attention to the weather right now just because it's very hard to see exactly what is happening. Bowling Green, Kentucky. Okay, so this is to the never eat shredded wheat, the northwest of Kentucky. So that wherever Evansville, northwest of Kentucky near Mount Vernon, that's what we're looking at here. Just people be careful um, in the weather in the next, you know, 24, 48 hours. We're going to leave it at that. That's, that's the information I have for you right now. There's plenty more I can bring you guys later, but I just wanted to do something short and sweet for y'all today. Nothing crazy. Um, I love you all immensely, Squirrel Tribe. Thank you for hanging out here with me and be safe. Pay attention to the weather. Watch Ryan Hall, y'all, because again, I trust him more than I trust the local news people. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, but it's true. Uh, and I will see you guys again tomorrow. Okay. Love you. Bye.